Hey everybody, Matt Barton here, your principal broker with this week's Minute or Two. Today, or this week, we're going to deal with signatures and specifically signatures for LLCs or trusts. I've been having a lot of these issues come up lately. So I'm going to share my screen here with you. I typed some of this stuff out, just a couple of examples. If you're going to be signing for an LLC or a client, I should say, signing for a uh, an LLC. If the entity's name happens to be, in this case, I just made it up, Invest One LLC, and the buyer or the seller's name is Bob Smith, and his <coughs> his role within that LLC is a manager, the signature line should look like this. Um, they should sign as Bob Smith, Manager, Invest One LLC. Okay, pretty straightforward. I know that takes a little extra work, but uh, sure saves a lot of problems when things uh, go a little sideways and people are starting to question whether the person signing has the authority to sign. It also falls under this bigger umbrella, right? When we get our licensure, we have a fiduciary of reasonable care. You know, what could be reasonably expected of your agent as they're helping Sherpa guide a transaction through? Um, should they look and make sure that the person signing has uh, the authority to sign? Uh, the answer is yes. Okay, now this is for something that is public, an LLC. Now, trusts are private, so some of the stuff I'm going to talk about later won't apply to the trusts. But as far as the signature line, much the same thing. If the entity's name is the Smith Family Trust, Bob Smith is the buyer or the seller. His role within the trust is the trustee, then he should be signing as Bob Smith, trustee for Smith Family Trust. Okay, this link down here, secureutah.gov, BES index, it's the Department of Commerce, and it allows us to do a search for entities that are LLCs or things of the like or partnerships. Um, and I wanted to show that to you so you could understand how easy this is to do. So let me pull that up on my screen. Did some screenshots of this. I went to the uh, site, that link, and just typed in a name that I thought there's probably going to be something there. Wasatch One Management LLC. You see the first highlighted area is the registered agent. And the way to think of that registered agent is they're not necessarily an authorized signer. It's just the person who is tagged to be the public point person for any inquiries in regards to that LLC. You also want to make sure that the status is active. Now, if you want to go the extra mile and do a little more um, reasonable care, you could click on view the management team and it will bring you to this interface. Yep, it's going to charge you a dollar. The state's going to charge you a dollar to find out who the managing members and partners are. If you pay the dollar, which I did, it will bring up a screen like this. And it will show for this entity, here's the manager and the members, right? So in this case, the Ashby's, John, Lenore, Ray are all members of that LLC. And so if you have a contract where somebody is signing for an LLC, um, one, they should declare who they are, and you should be able to go and check and make sure that they are authorized to encumber or sign on behalf of that LLC. Uh, again, a dollar is not a huge amount of money, and the amount of headache it can save, although it's not a, an official requirement, um, I think at a minimum, our requirement would be to come here and make sure it's a legitimate entity, whoever's on the REPSI, and to make sure it's an active status. Okay. Uh, I hope that helps answer some questions. I'm going to put this back up on the screen. Again, this is the way you sign for an LLC, and this is the way you sign for a trust. Your office managers have been asking for things like this, so if you could help do that, we reduce, re we reduce risk to the company, to you, and to your clients in the transaction. Thanks. Hope you have a great week.